You may be seated. Uh, our only announcement at this point of the service is that announcements have been moved to the after the sermon time. We want to uh, praise the Lord with all that we are, and uh, we'll do so first by listening to the choir singing, You That Know the Lord is Gracious. Church in Canada on what we believe and turn to the very beginning, 1.1, and we'll read responsibly from the part, the section entitled God. 1.1 to 1.6. There is one true God whom to know is life eternal, whom to serve is joy and peace. God has created all that is. The whole universe testifies to the majesty and power of its maker. upholds and defends the truth given to the apostles and recorded in the scriptures, the Old and New Testaments, witness to God's mighty acts. They reveal the Creator's holy love and lead us to Jesus Christ. Therefore, with the one church universal, we believe in one God, eternal trinity, Father, Son, and Holy Spirit, three in one, one in three, equal in power and glory. God is the Father to whom we come, the Son through whom we come, the Spirit by whom we come. Let's sing together 642, O Master, let me walk with thee. 642.
opening prayers are a time for each of us to come together before God, to open ourselves to God and all that God has to say to us. And so as we come to our prayers of approach, confession, the assurance of pardon, and the Lord's Prayer, we ask you to open yourselves up to God. And however you say that to God, please be sure to do so. With this in mind, let us pray. Lord, we come again into this house dedicated to you and to the worship of you, and we thank you for the privilege of coming today. We thank you that we have the health and the strength and the ability to be here today. We thank you for all who are here. We look to you, Lord, as we come. Give us that frame of mind, that ability to reflect on all that we see during the week, that we might know what you do in creation and what you do across our lives. Thank you for the rain which refreshes the earth. Thank you for your love which refreshes our lives. We look to you, Lord, as we look out into space and see the vast expansions of all that is there. We recognize you as the God who made all this. As we hear of all the population of the planet Earth and as we see the thousands of cultures that make it up, we recognize that you love and care for each and every one of us. We thank you for this. We thank you for your loving approach that gave your only Son, Jesus Christ, for us. Lord, as we look at you and your character, we remember again our own shortcomings, our own inabilities, our own sins and rebellion against you and your ways. And so we take a quiet moment, Lord, to confess our sins to you. Any actions or attitudes or inactions against your will and way, we confess them to the Lord. Forgive us, Lord, when we are apathetic towards all that we see going on around us. Forgive us, Lord, when we choose not to love or care about truth, where we choose not to love others, where we hurt others with our words and our deeds. Help us, Lord. Change our hearts and minds to be more like yours. Lord, we thank you that wherever we confess our sins, you are faithful and just to forgive us our sins and to cleanse us from all unrighteousness. We thank you that we can agree together for your way and will in this congregation and also for our whole community. And so we say the Lord's Prayer together using the words debts and debtors. Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come. Thy will be done on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread. And forgive us our debts as we forgive our debtors. Lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom and the power and the glory forever and ever. Amen. The Anthem Time.
couple of years ago when I uh, uh, just came, there was a woman who was looking for a church, and she says, uh, I'm sort of looking for a church in town that's kind of like black gospel. Is that the Presbyterian church? <laughs> I said that later on uh, the, the year after, and they said, sort of depends on the Sunday that you come. <laughs> well, there it is. Thank you for that. We're uh, up, coming up to the children's time now, and uh, we want to sing their uh, hymn, which is 688, as Water to the Thirsty, directly following that. Boys and girls, please come on up to the front. Six. Eight eight. Go ahead. 
garbage? Yeah, maybe sometimes you throw it in the garbage. That's right. So God wants our hearts to be like the soft Play-Doh in his hands, and he'll make some beautiful things out of our lives. That's part of what we learn as you go through those doors and learn more and more about what's going on, what God wants for your lives. He wants us to be soft and moldable in, God, in his hands, and he'll make something beautiful out of it. But if we're hard, we say, no, nah, I don't want to do this, or I don't care about this, or I don't like that. Or If we come with bad attitudes, then it's like the hard stuff. And what do we do with the hard stuff? It's harder to make something of it, isn't it? Really hard. So let's bow our heads. Sorry, go ahead. Yeah, we won't throw you in the garbage. No, that's for sure. Can I sit by you? Thank you. Let's bow our heads and close our eyes. Talk with God. You say the prayer after me, everybody, please. Dear God, help us to be moldable and soft in your hands to learn from you to listen to you and to want to go your way in Jesus name Amen Bless you guys as you go The Old Testament reading is from Proverbs, chapter 31, verses 10 to 31. And in the Pew Bible, it's on page 992. This is the epilogue to um, chapter 31. A wife of noble character, who can find? She is worth far more than rubies. Her husband has full confidence in her and lacks nothing of value. She brings him good, not harm, all the days of her life. She selects wool and flax and works with eager hands. She is like the merchant ships bringing her food from afar. She gets up while it is still night. She provides food for her family and portions for her women servants. She considers a field and buys it. Out of her earnings, she plants a vineyard. She sets about her work vigorously. Her arms are strong for her tasks. She sees that her trading is profitable and her lamp does not go out at night. In her hands, she holds the distaff and grasps the spindle with her fingers. She opens her arms to the poor and extends her hands to the needy. When it snows, she has no fear for her household, for all of them are clothed in scarlet. She makes coverings for her bed. She is clothed in fine linen and purple. Her husband is respected at the city gate where he takes his seat among the elders of the land. She makes linen garments and sells them and supplies the merchants with sashes. She is clothed with strength and dignity. She can laugh at the days to come. She speaks with wisdom and faithful instruction is on her tongue. She watches over the affairs of her household and does not eat the bread of idleness. Her children arise and call her blessed, her husband also, and he praises her. Many women do noble things, but you surpass them all. Charm is deceptive and beauty is fleeting, but a woman who fears the Lord is to be praised. Honor her for all that her hands have done and let her works bring her praise at the city gate. The New Testament reading comes from the book of James, chapter 3, verses 13 to the end of the chapter, and then continuing into chapter 4 and ending with verse 8a. And you can find that on page 1802. Who is wise and understanding among you? Let him show it by his good life, by deeds done in the humility that comes from wisdom. But if you harbor bitter envy and selfish ambition in your hearts, do not boast about it or deny the truth. Such wisdom does not come down from heaven, but is earthly, unspiritual, of the devil. For where you have envy and selfish ambition, there you find disorder and every evil practice. But the wisdom that comes from heaven is first of all pure, then peace-loving, 
considerate, submissive, full of mercy and good fruit, impartial and sincere. Peacemakers who sow in peace raise a harvest of righteousness. What causes fights and quarrels among you? Don't they come from your desires that battle within you? You want something, but don't get it. You kill and covet, but cannot have what you want. You quarrel and fight. You do not have because you do not ask God. When you ask, you do not receive because you ask with wrong motives that you may spend what you get on your pleasures. You adulterous people, don't you know that friendship with the world is hatred toward God? Anyone who chooses to be a friend of the world becomes an enemy of God. Or do you think that scripture says without reason that the spirit he caused to live in us envies intensely? But he gives us more grace. That is why the scripture says, God opposes the proud but gives grace to the humble. Submit yourselves then to God. Resist the devil and he will flee from you. Come near to God and he will come near to you. turn over to the the psalm, uh, responsive psalm today is psalm number one. Page 803. I'll say the first verse and you the next and so forth. Blessed are those who do not walk in step with the wicked or stand in the way that sinners take or sit in the company of mockers. They are like a tree planted by streams of water which yields its fruit in season and whose leaf does not wither. Whatever they do prospers. Therefore the wicked will not stand in the judgment, nor sinners in the assembly of the righteous. Amen. And then the gospel reading is from Mark. Mark chapter 8, starting at verse 30. which is on page 1502. Jesus warned them not to tell anyone about him. And then he began to teach them that the Son of Man must suffer many things and be rejected by the elders, chief priests, and teachers of the law, and that he must be killed and after three days rise again. He spoke plainly about this. And Peter took him aside and began to rebuke him. But when Jesus turned and looked at his disciples, he rebuked Peter. Get behind me, Satan, he said. You don't have in mind the concerns of God, but merely human concerns. Then he called the crowd to him along with his disciples and said, Whoever wants to be my disciple must deny themselves. Take up their cross and follow me. For whoever wants to save their life will lose it. But whoever loses their life for me and for the gospel will save it. What good is it for you to gain the whole world yet forfeit your soul? Or what can you give in exchange for your soul? If any of you are ashamed of me and my words in this adulterous and sinful generation, the Son of Man will be ashamed of you when he comes in his Father's glory with the holy angels. Amen. This is the word of the Lord. Thanks be to God. Let us pray. Lord, help us as we continue to read the scriptures and to learn of you, to continue to be soft in your hands, to open ourselves to you anew, to desire to hear from you and to understand what you are saying through Jesus Christ our Lord. Amen. The hymn is number one. There is a number one in the hymnal, and this is it. 
How blessed are they? This is the metrical version of Psalm number one. speaking while another speaker is trying to speak 
or trying to shout down a speaker while he or she is hoping to communicate something relatively important. And so all this brings to mind a book that I once read called All I Really Needed to Know I Learned in Kindergarten. Do you know that book? It's by a fellow named Robert Fulham, and although I don't agree with all his philosophical point of view, he makes some very, very helpful points. I remember his saying some pivotal things that I believe all of our governmental leaders at every level of government should revisit, and I probably bring him up here because we need to, too. For instance, if you make a mess, clean it up. Or if you've done something wrong, say you're sorry and ask forgiveness of the other person. These are all things that he says that he learned or should have learned in kindergarten. Uh, other things are, are even more practical. Milk and cookies are good for you, which is partly why we have our coffee time afterwards. And so are naps. Naps are good for you, but not right now during the sermon time. <laughs> One of my points in bringing up this book is simply to say it is possible to be in opposition to the government at all levels of government and still be respectful, no matter what your political persuasion is. Wisdom and humility, the scriptures say, go hand in hand. But the book of James says, look out if you're giving in to bitter envy. What do I mean by envy? I mean discontent or resentment as you think about someone else's desirable possessions or qualities. Look out if your selfish ambition orientates your life. This is where disorder, James says, criminal acts and every evil practice likes to harbor. Wisdom favors peaceful negotiation, mercy, impartiality, sincerity, being willing to listen to reason and appeal, unless you're under one, of course, and to leaders. That's one interpretation that I read of submissive, being willing to listen to reason and appeal, as well as being considerate of those on your daily path. A wise person does not bowl another person over. It is the selfishly ambitious, the envious person who wants their own way at almost all costs. They're the ones who tend to be the aggressive ones. Conflicts often happen, whether at home or in the church, or at work because of undealt problems within ourselves. Sometimes we think it's always the other guy, but often the problem lies in ourselves. So I say this because it takes two or more people to argue, and if so, if you choose not to argue and not to escalate what is happening, you will find it often possible that your presence is a transforming one. But this means that you'll have to do lots of homework on what's going inside you. In fact, James says that we quarrel often because we don't talk with God about what's going, inside, going on inside ourselves. Rather, we talk with God to get stuff, or promotions, or power, or the things which line up with our selfish ambition and envy, rather than what God is trying to do. And so we can fight for what we want. But look out for the loyal opposition. And here I'm using it in the sense of God. Because when we get into this mode, even as believers in Jesus Christ, we can find ourselves with God as our opposition. Then James reminds us that God opposes the proud, but gives grace to the humble and the oppressed. So look out when you find yourself as a rebel, as a self-confident one who knows that everyone else around them is wrong. God, too, may be opposing you. Are you willing to hear the other person's point of view? Are you willing to pray with the other person, assuming they too are believers, and ask God to help you? You'd be surprised what this can do in the midst of conflict. James suggests we humble ourselves before God, and when we do so, we will treat each other in a more peaceful and loving way. In Psalm 1 today, we read and sang that we have a choice between giving in to ourself our sinful rebellion and being a mocker of God and all that is good, or we can delight in what God says and agree with God in our words and actions. And so as a kind of introduction to the whole book of Psalms, the psalmist says, which way, which way do you want to go? And maybe the answer is obvious, but it's still a struggle at times, isn't it? As God fills us up with God's love, we can continue to give away what we receive. But if we choose to go against this and give in to our selfish ambition or envy instead, the consequence is that we have God as our opposition, our loyal opposition. Sometimes, not all times, we go through difficulties to remind us of these choices. 
One of the things all of us can do is begin to ask God and others that we trust what things in ourselves, what attitudes, what behaviors, what thought patterns need to be changed so that we can grow in wisdom. Just asking someone else what things we might need to work on in ourselves is a courageous step. Sometimes we present ourselves to others as if we have it all together. But we know, all of us who take the time, that quiet place before we go to sleep, or perhaps it's the quiet one right when we wake up, that we struggle usually in more than a few areas in our lives. We struggle with stress. We struggle with lack of resources. We struggle to manage our time wisely, not to spend all our extra time on ourselves and our pleasure. We struggle with our weight and staying healthy when we want to simply eat or do whatever we feel like rather than what we know is best for our health. We struggle to exercise appropriately. We struggle to help others as we are able. And you can put in whatever things you're struggling with because those are probably ones that I'm struggling with. And we cannot be the perfect man or woman that we want to be no matter what age we are. Did you notice the Proverbs 31 woman that Lori Kim so well, well read about who is seemingly able to go through life 24-7 being wonderful at work, wonderful at home, wonderful at church? Do you think she had any challenges or hurts or things that were beyond her control? I'm sure she did. Did you notice how modern or postmodern that woman is in the ancient book of Proverbs? She is not the typical picture of a wife or a woman in ancient Israel, yet there she is. She cares for the poor and manages her household well, but all of us, whether women or men, have struggles keeping it all together. Work, home, play, church, community, arts, business, volunteering, you name it. Our lives have never been more freed up by the machines that we use and the heat we have at our disposal, and the food we have so plentifully. Yet we hear so often how little time we have, and how fast time flies. And no, I won't tell you how many more shopping days left till Christmas. I'll let the flyers coming and the internet do that for me. So what do we do when all these parts of our lives sneak up on us? If we can admit our need and ask for help, we are doing very well. If we have friends we can talk to, or if we have community connections where someone will listen, that's a big part of dealing with the stress and the challenges we face. Sometimes we need to find appropriate professionals to receive counseling, psychological, or psychiatric help. There's no shame in this. Someone who receives help and is able to admit what areas of life he or she is struggling in, that is a strong, courageous person. It is also a person who will be more able to handle conflict and difficulties that arise just by breathing and sharing space with other human beings. And so we look to learn. We look to learn from our difficulties. We look to admit the truth about ourselves and others, no matter how difficult that becomes. And as we do, we experience anew the grace of God and the wonder of receiving love, both from God and from other human beings. Let us pray. Lord, we continue to ask you to help us to get to step one, admitting our need and where that is, and letting others into those parts of our lives. Lord, we need your help, spiritually, emotionally, socially, intellectually, in every part of who we are. Help us as we seek to honor you Help us as we seek to know you and enjoy you through Jesus Christ, we pray. Amen. You'll notice that we move the announcements to this. We're trying a little experiment in when we're doing our announcements so that if you come right on the hour, uh, you won't miss the announcements. Or if uh, you... Uh, anyway... We're trying the announcements here. I won't go into all the reasons. Um, it's good to have everyone in church today. We hope if you're visiting us today that you'll take time to, to sign our register, which is just in the back on the left there. And there are lots and lots of things uh, going on in the bulletin. Uh, I encourage you to look at the things that are happening, the, the small groups that are starting up. Particularly, I need to know if you're interested in this uh, five-hour uh, How People Grow 
a video course that uh, uh, is looking at how we put together the different parts of our lives and grow together. That's uh, offering, I'm, I'm thinking of offering that here on Wednesday nights, but if some other night or some other time during the day will work for you, I'll go with whoever uh, contacts me and that. Uh, Lynn's also offering uh, Changes at HEO, which is a, a, a wonderful course for women, and you can call her uh, at that number in the bulletin. Many other announcements are there, the Board of Managers meeting, etc. Uh, our Saturday services have started back up. If a few of you who go to the university regularly would put up flyers wherever you are at the university, they're right outside my office, I'd be very appreciative if you would do that for me, and, and we'd uh, continue to uh, advertise in that way, that small way at the university. Also, uh, there, the flowers uh, here on this side of the sanctuary have been placed in loving memory of Jean Pippi by Dave, Kathy, and Joshua. And the news uh, letter committee is wanting you to uh, compile, it's wanting to compile and, uh, the newsletter and your input is invited. Past summer highlights in your lives and upcoming fall plans are of interest. This is just short notice because we need this by next Sunday. But please submit plans, uh, submit in writing or by phone by next Sunday, September 27th, or earlier to Jean Bruno, Lillian Crawford, or Monica Janes at the church office. Thank you for making the, the newsletter what it is, and a big thank you to the committee who spent a lot of time uh, making it a reality. So keep that in mind, and uh, it's great to have your news. There are many other things that are happening in the bulletin, including uh, the uh, AMS International Project for Malawi. Mal how do you say it? Malawi. That's it. On Friday, this this Friday is it? Is it this Friday at 7 p.m.? Uh, some interesting things happening there. Ten dollar tickets. Uh, please take the time to look at all of uh, the things that are in your bulletin. Now we proceed to uh, take up the offering. If the ushers would come forward, we give to God our tithes and offerings at this time.
may be seated. Our closing prayers are a time for us to offer our concerns before God. It's also a time to continue to support and uphold those who are in need. And so we look to a God and we give you some space to offer your own prayers during this time as well. And so we encourage you to use that time wisely uh, before God. This in mind, let us pray. Help us, Lord, as we come into your presence again in this special way with others who also desire that their lives be touched, moved, and transformed by you. Lord, there are many people on our minds in these days. We look to you. We look to you quietly and ask you to influence their lives for good. Lord, we hear so much in the news, uh, so much hurt and pain and loss, be particularly with those who have been losing loved ones in Afghanistan, those who are losing loved ones across the world in conflict areas. For the many fears and anxieties that we have when we try to stay informed, In these days about swine flu, help us, Lord, not only to learn how to appropriately cover our sneezes and washing our hands, but also to ask you for mercy in this whole uh, pandemic. We look to you, Lord, and ask for your care. We also continue to pray for those who are Needing your healing hand, Catherine Pico. And uh, Elizabeth Burgess, uh, it's her daughter in law by the same name, who's had cancer. Lord, we just ask for your healing hand. And others, Lord, on Angus, on Gordon, on Debbie. Continue to heal them with all that you have. And Lord, we add other names who need, particularly need your healing touch in these days. Help us, we pray, to be faithful in bringing to you these who need our love, concern, and prayers. And give us what we need as we seek to honor you in our families, in our neighborhoods, in our city. Give us wisdom as we come towards an election to be wise in who we vote for. Give them a sense of accountability not only to the voters, but to you. And help us become a righteous and God-loving city. We thank you for these things and trust you in Jesus' name. Amen. Our closing hymn is uh, number 324, which I think you all know, Great is Thy Faithfulness, 324.
Now may the grace of our Lord Jesus Christ and the love of God, the friendship and the fellowship of the Holy Spirit be with you now and forevermore. Amen. Thank you.